Hello everyone, it's Amity Sensei. I came back to Japan from Spain a little while ago. I'm so sorry for making you guys worry. Like all the other places, Spain is in a serious situation right now too due to the coronavirus. And because I was traveling along, I was really worried about what was going to happen. But luckily, I managed to get a plane ticket and come back home. Thank you so much, you guys, for your concern. And I'm doing perfectly fine, feeling really well. But I'm gonna stay home and focus on making videos. I was actually supposed to participate in a live stream called Adobe's Creative Cloud Dojo or CC Dojo after returning from Spain. This was scheduled on March 19th at 8 p.m. and I was supposed to be a part of it, but unfortunately I had to cancel it due to the concerns of coronavirus. It's really disappointing and I really feel sorry for all the stuff at Adobe for what's been happening. During the live stream, I was planning to show how to combine Adobe Fresco and Photoshop using iPad, but since it was canceled, I want to do it here in this video instead. On a side note, I attended CC Dojo about a year ago, and that time I did demonstration on how to use Adobe XD and Acrobat for work optimization. It's this video. It's a bit embarrassing to show you guys, but I will leave a link in the description box down below. So please check it out if you're interested. Today I'm going to use Adobe Fresco and Photoshop. I will show you some techniques to combine these two apps and explain about the new updates in Fresco. This video is going to be a bit long, but I hope you guys stay with me until the end of this video. Alright, let's get started. First, Tap the Create New button at the bottom left corner and select the canvas. This time I'm going to choose the size of the current screen. This sets the size of the canvas to the screen size, so 11 inches for the iPad. With Adobe Fresco, I suggest using dark mode. To change to a dark mode, open the control center from the top right corner, hold the brightness icon, and then tap the dark mode icon. When you change it to dark mode, the surrounding toolbars turn to black and the canvas stands out so it's easier to draw. Today I'm going to draw an illustration of a wine glass and show you some new features on Adobe Fresco. First, inside the brushes, choose natural inker from ink box and we're going to use this to draw the outline of the wine glass. This time we're not going to make a perfectly accurate illustration it's going to be a rough illustration with a hint of hand-drawn taste, so for now, don't care about the details and keep on drawing. When you're using natural inker, if you press it strongly, the line becomes really thick, and if you loosen it, you can draw thin lines. There's a wide range of pressure you can use while drawing, so you could play around with it to draw analog and rough drawing. It's pretty fun. In Adobe Fresco, there's a round button called Touch Shortcut at the bottom left corner. I'm using it right now. You can give this a custom shortcut, and by default when using a brush, the shortcut is an eraser. Now I'm using natural inker to draw this, but while pressing the shortcut, the brush turns into eraser. So you can draw using the natural inker brush, but you can use it as an eraser too without changing the tool. If you want to erase using a different brush, you have to switch to the eraser tool, so you need to hold the eraser tool from the toolbar on the left, and then you can switch to a different brush. You can use this to switch to a bigger brush to erase something bigger in your picture, so you could switch to a brush that fits your knees. Next, we are going to draw a wine bottle, so add a new layer using the plus button, and we'll be drawing on this layer. I'm still using natural inker. There's a tip when you're drawing this bottle. Start off by drawing the central line and then draw the bottle so that it's symmetrical.
Okay, I'm mostly done with the bottle, so now I'm going to change the size. You can change the size using the transform tool in the toolbar on the left. It's the fifth one from the top. You can spin, flip, or change the size using this tool. So I'm going to use it to change the size of the bottle as well as the glass so that they are in balance. Now we are adding some color. This time we are using a water brush to add color. And there's also a new update to this brush, so I hope you pay attention here. We are going to use the theme brush in the water brush category to add some red and the color of the label as well. The color is pretty strong by default, so to adjust this, there's a category down here. Where you can change the wash soft and wash flat, so adjust it to wash soft and make the color a bit more pale. It's similar to opacity. Wash flat controls how the color spreads when you put it on the canvas, so we are going to use this to draw this illustration. I'm almost done with coloring. I'm drawing in purple, but if you want to change it to something like red, if you just color it over in red using the watercolor brush, the color spreads around and it gets messed up easily. So I'm going to show you how to add and change the color. To do this, we are going to use a feature called low capacity. You can use this feature by first making sure that the color layer has been selected and when you tap the three dots icon on the right, there is a lock opacity button. So select it and turn it on. And when it's turned on, grab the red watercolor brush, trace the parts in purple. Then if you look closely, you can see that the red color just had it doesn't spill out of the purple part that I previously colored. I'm going to try coloring more roughly. The red color is added to the color parts gradually. So the color gets added only to the color parts and it won't spill out at all. This is the beauty of the lock opacity feature. This feature actually has been a part of Fresco for a while. But what's different this time is that when you draw using a watercolor brush, some parts become lighter or darker than the other parts. And when you add color to the darker parts, the color changes but the brightness doesn't change. If you add color to the lighter parts, the opacity doesn't change so it still looks pretty light but the color changes. For instance, if I add some color to this light part, the opacity doesn't change. This is the new feature of Fresco. The opacity remains the same, but the color changes. It's a small update, so some people may know about this, but I was kind of surprised by this. So I hope you guys use this feature when drawing with a watercolor brush. Okay, that's all for Adobe Fresco. From now, I'm going to show you how to combine this with Adobe Photoshop for the iPad. To do this, select the export button at the top right corner and choose present and export. There's an export format section here, so select it and change the format to PSD, the format for Photoshop, then tap the export button. 
and you can choose where you want to export it to, so select Photoshop here. If you can't find it, tap the other section and Photoshop should be inside there. When you select Photoshop, the app will open automatically. And as you open it, it looks like this. And the layers that we use in Fresco are now placed onto Photoshop. So we can hide or show the layer or use the movement tool to change its position. What's great about Photoshop is that you can change the color easily and it's easier to see the layers as well compared to Fresco. It makes things easier when you want to group the layers too. There is a blur feature and you can also add text as well. So if you want to do these things, I suggest doing them on Photoshop. When you want to group the layers, select one layer and swipe another layer to the right to switch to multiple sections. So while they're selected, there is a folder icon on the right and you can group the layers by tapping it. It's better to group the outline layers and the color layers by each object. When you want to make a banner using the illustration, you have to trim the size so that it fits the banner. So you can trim it using the trimming tool from the tool panel and trim it down to 16 to 9, so it's 1920 times 1080. In Photoshop, you can't manually enter the dimensions to change the size, which is a bit disappointing. So you have to use the pen and look at the dimensions in the menu bar at the top to adjust it. I hope they improve this soon. After this, I'm going to work on the title and enter some text before I finish. Okay, I'm finished. Just by exporting the illustration from Fresco and adding a title and some text, you can make it look pretty neat. So if you guys have a good looking illustration, you could export it to Photoshop and do something like this. Finally, I will quickly explain how to change the color as I forgot to mention earlier. For example, if you want to change the color in the wine layer, Select the layer and tap this button in the property panel. Then the properties of the layer appear from the bottom like this. So tap add adjustment and select color and intensity, which is where you can change the color. As you select it, a new layer is added to the top. And this is where you can change the color and intensity. So slide the color. And as you can see, this changes the color to purple, blue, yellow, so you can set the color of your choice. The color slide changes the color, and the intensity slide can make it more vivid or monochrome, and brightness makes it darker or lighter. You can change the contrast here, which can be done using Fresco, so if you want to adjust the color like this, you should export it to Photoshop. Now I will change the color of the bottle. The color of the entire layer changes, so if you want to change only a part of it, you need to use the mask feature. You can use the mask feature by selecting the white box here and grabbing a black brush. And if you cover the parts that you don't want the color to change, the layer information changes to hide and the original color appears. When you trace it with black, it hides the part cover and tracing it with white will show the part cover. This is the mask feature. If you're not quite sure about this part, it might be easier if you just google what mask is first. 
It could be better to use it after you fully understand what the mask is on Photoshop. For now though, just try to remember that black is to hide and white is to show. You can change the colors you want in Photoshop. So I highly suggest making use of Photoshop. Today I was planning to do this for Adobe CC Dojo. But unfortunately I couldn't go there, so I decided to do it in my video instead. I hope I can be a part of CC Dojo again. And when it happens, so I'll definitely let you guys know. So I hope you guys come and see me. I only explained about the lock capacity feature today. But there are a lot more new features added with the update this time. There's an online community that I run called iPadMate. And within that community, I talk about some other small updates as well as creative ways to use Fresco in the form of online seminars. I also do live streamings often to teach my members some useful techniques step by step. So if you're interested or if you want to know more about Adobe Fresco, I hope you check out my community. I also share archives of my previous videos there. I'll leave a link to iPadMate in the description box, so please check it out. Okay, that was kind of a long video, and I would like to stop here. But if you like this video, please give a thumbs up, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!